Welcome. This question says determine the moment of inertia about the origin of this system. Here's my origin. I have one, two, three different masses and they're at three different positions. So I need to, let's just briefly visualize this again. Uh, this is one, two, three, this is one, two, three, four, and there's my first point, and that is a three kilogram mass. And then I have my second point, which is here, and that's a five kilogram mass. And then my third point is one, two, three, minus three meters. And that is a four kilogram mass. So my turning axis, my turning axis is there. So I need to determine the distance from the turning axis to each of these masses because my moment of inertia is equal to the sum of m r squared i where this is m i. What this nomenclature means is if you have three masses as I have at the moment this will be the first mass times the first distance squared plus the second mass times the second distance squared plus the third mass times the third distance squared. So that's what that means. So now when I look at this I can say well my moment of inertia about this turning axis is equal to, it doesn't matter which, which order I take these in, let's take the first mass as being the three kilogram mass and when I look I see that this is uh, um, a certain distance away and if I'm mindful I can recognize that this is four meters here and this is three meters there and with a bit of practice I've I realize it's a three four five triangle this is five squared uh, if I don't recognize the triangle then I use Pythagoras and I say well the sum of the squares of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides so that's 4, 4 is a 16, plus 3, 3 is a 9, makes 25. So the square root of 25 is 5. But this triangle comes up quite often, actually. Um, so even though it wasn't directly given to me, it was relatively straightforward to work out what it was. If I look at the second mass, that's the 5 kilogram mass, this is a bit more straightforward. It's just 2 meters away, so this will be... 2 squared and then for this mass down here I have the 4 kilogram mass and this would be 3 squared it's just the distance it's not I mean I know if I take minus 3 and square it I get plus 9 but uh, it's actually not the sign doesn't matter it's just the, the separation is how far the mass is away from the turning axis so this is going to equal um, 5 5 is a 25, 3 25 is 75, plus 2 2 is a 4, 5 4 is a 20, plus 3 3 is a 9, 4 9 is 36, 3 9 is a 27, 4 9 is a 36. So that's going to be 75, that's going to be 111. 121, if I did that right, 75 plus 20 would make 95. Um, 95, oh, did I do that right actually? 25, 75, 95, uh, 131 actually. That is 131. 131, and that would be, well, look at your equation kilograms because the mass is there meters squared because r is squared so this would be 131 kilogram 
meter squared. So, notice please, distances make big differences. This is further away than the other two, even though it's the lighter mass, 3 kilograms versus 5 versus 4, even though it's the lighter mass, it has the bigger component being introduced into the moment of inertia because it is further away. And it's not tremendously further away, but it is, uh, uh, um, the distances are very significant for moments of inertia. That's the first point I'd make. And the second point I'd make is that I don't always have to ask you for the moment of inertia about some kind of origin. I could basically pick any point on here. I could pick a point like uh, I could pick a point like that point and say, "Oh, work out what the moment of inertia is about there." Or I could pick a point like that, two and two, and say, "Work out what the moment of inertia is about that point there." So get used to the idea of visualizing, working out some geometries, and then working out your moment of inertia. So it's a good, it's a good example for me to check whether or not you can visualize and whether or not you can you can uh, work out new geometries as needed and there we have it